Hi everyone, I'm Shane, and I guess you missed our webinar, but not to worry, we're going to sum it up in about one-eighth of the time. Okay, first thing when communicating is thinking about your audience, and there's all sorts of different audiences out there, like fifth grade classroom, chamber of commerce, the internet. So say you study frogs and toads, which is what I did for my research. What do you think a fifth grade classroom is going to ask you? All kinds of wild questions. They're going to ask you about toads causing warts and poisonous snakes, which are actually venomous, and the like. Well, what about a chamber of commerce? They're more interested in the bottom line. They're interested in money, economy, uh, quality of life, etc. Well, what about something like the internet? There's all sorts of different things out there. And so it's a bigger and broader audience, but thinking about your audience as much as possible can help you really hone and craft that message. All right, so when thinking about connecting your science to your audience, it can be really helpful to start with what you know. So say you study charismatic megafauna, well then maybe places like tourism boards or wildlife organizations or even uh, photography clubs, they might be interested in hearing about your science. What if you study something like space weather? Well, that's a little bit more esoteric, maybe, but there are audiences interested in that. It could be classrooms you could zoom into. It could be government agencies who are interested in how solar flares might affect uh, the power grid or even power companies. So there are audiences out there. What if you study something that is not charismatic, but really environmentally important. Insects, frogs for that matter. Well, maybe it's gardening clubs or botany organizations or botanic gardens or natural history museums. There's always going to be an audience that it's obvious or makes more sense to connect with, especially if you're just starting out. And a really great way to think about your audience is to think about what they care about. And one way to do this is to frame your message in these we all care about statements. Things like money or jobs, the future, quality of life, children, health. There are always some sort of thing that you can relate to your audience on. And this we all care about statement is a really nice way to frame that. So to bring it all home, uh, all audiences are different and they care about different things. And that's OK, but it's important to identify what those things might be. Be because that's how you connect with them. Some audiences will be more immediately interested in what you do than others, especially if you're just starting out, find those audiences. It's a really low barrier to entry and a really great way to get your science out there. And for any audience, there are tips like connecting on shared values. If you can connect in a way that they care about, that you care about, that connection is going to be incredibly strong and you won't be just talking at them, you'll be engaging in conversation with them. All right, so now you've identified your audience, what do you say to them? Or I guess, what don't you say? And this gets into jargon and jargon is everywhere. It's pervasive. It's not just in the sciences. We use it all the time. Think about the words that you use. There are a lot of words out there that aren't really long or really technical, but they have multiple meetings. Words like modeling or mean or sheer or whatever it might be. So just keep that in mind. A great way to practice removing jargon is the Upgoer 5 text editor. Basically, you uh, can go online, you find, just Google this, you can find it, you type your message into the box and it tells you if your message is acceptable using only the 1000 most common words in the English language. And it's a great way to break down really, really technical vernacular, really technical words and language into its beyond simplest terms. And I can't stress enough that this is a great tool to break things down, but it's not plug and play. So finding something in the middle is really great. Also, you can just ask a friend. FaceTime or Zoom a friend and, and talk about your science and ask them, did that make sense? How many words didn't you understand? It might seem silly, but it's a really effective tool. Clear communication is good. It, it, there's no other way to put that. No matter what you're doing, it's really uh, helpful to be able to communicate clearly, whether that's in the sciences, whether that's with your friends, your family, whether that's outside of the sciences, whatever it might be. So reducing jargon is just good all around. And I can't stress this enough. Reducing jargon is not dumbing things down. Just because you're speaking in the same language doesn't mean you're dumbing it down. 
the example I like to use is you wouldn't talk to someone who only speaks French and English and expect them to understand. That's how it is with science. There are ways to come to a mutually beneficial area, uh, a shared language that everyone can understand. So to recap, jargon is pervasive. It's everywhere. It's not just in the sciences. It's even in the definition of jargon uh, if you look it up. And it's not only big words that are confusing. There are words, like I said, with multiple meanings. There are acronyms. There are really obscure words. So just keep that in mind. There are ways you can and frankly should practice reducing it. Check out Upgoer 5, uh, phone a friend, whatever it might be. And reducing jargon will increase your professional success. I can't stress this enough. It's not just for kind of like the good of science communication. It's good there, but it's also good for you professionally. And it is not dumbing it down. It is speaking in a shared language that everyone understands and connects with. Finally, we've identified your audience. We've identified what not to say. Well, now what do you say? And this is your message. So a message is really great because it takes your science, the, the message about your science, and distills it into what matters or why it matters, why the people you're talking to should care about what you're saying. So say that you study climate change and you're talking about uh, snowpack loss. Well, if you talk to ski resorts about how they're going to be uh, affected financially, they're going to care about that. Or if you're talking to uh, botany organizations or gardening clubs about how shifts in seasonality is going to affect when flowers and plants bloom, they're going to care about that. Or maybe even you're just trying to describe scale and talking about a device used on the moon. Well, our detector is about the size of a small juice box. This really paints a picture and allows your audience to share in that message, share in that science with you. And one thing to really keep in mind is try, no matter how difficult this might be, to end on a positive note. We as humans are programmed to respond to positivity. So even if the message isn't positive, there is a way to end on a positive note. Talk about being part of the solution. Talk about making a positive change. And this is especially important if you have some sort of call to action in your message. To wrap up, Messages distill your work into what matters. This is the take home. So we're in the take home of the take home, essentially. Emphasize the relevance and value of your science. And if possible, try to use examples and metaphors. This relates to people in a way that just throwing facts at them may or may not. And end on a positive note. Again, I understand it is possibly one of the most difficult things, but we respond to positivity. So talk about being part of the solution. Talk about that positive change. If you want more tips and tools, you want more resources, go to our website, follow us on Twitter, and join our community. And thanks for listening.